Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to perform object tracking using the blob tracking module on Appear. Many processes in cell biology or developmental biology or even non-bio fields, they involve movement of objects as a function of time. These objects can be organelles, they can be vesicles, they can be cells or even molecules, but eventually it comes down to segmenting these objects against the background and providing that segmented image as an input to the tracking module. And luckily the segmentation is relatively easy for most images, especially for fluorescence images like the one that you see on the screen. Here we can easily segment this by simple thresholding using for example Otsu and any objects that are close by can be separated using watershed and that separated or that segmented image can be provided as an input to the tracking module. Now in some cases the images can be a bit challenging for segmentation. For example if you look at this image this cannot be segmented easily using a simple thresholding. So in fact these may require deep learning approaches and they are available on Appear. So go ahead and explore the machine learning tools on Appear. Now, if you have Zen, go ahead and explore Zen IntelliSys and IntelliSys may also help you in uh, segmenting certain type of images. So eventually, in summary, it comes down to the fact that you need a segmented image where each object is well segmented and separated as an input to your tracking module. And then the tracking module does its job where it tracks each object and generates a report. So let's jump into Appear to get a quick familiarization with the user interface. And then I'll explain how to use the blob trapping, tracking module on Appear. So let's jump in. And first start by signing up for your free account at www.appear.com, A-P-E-E-R.com. And uh, if it's your first time, take some time to familiarize yourself with the peer because there may be certain tools that are useful for you besides just the tracking that we're going to have a look at. For example, if you look at the machine learning toolkit, it contains all the tools you need for deep learning based training and segmentation, oh, well, including annotate. So it walks you through the process of annotating your data sets, training, and then segmenting uh, using the trained model. On the left hand side, we also have community content that shows you public workflows and public modules. And these are the modules and workflows that everyone can see. And if you keep going further down, you see my lab where all the content that you see in my lab is visible only to you. And this is where you can upload your own files. In fact, I have already uploaded this one image that we're going to use as input for today's workflow. Uploading is pretty straightforward. You just go to browse and select the file from your local directory, or you can just drag them here and uh, upload the files that way. Modules, if you know how to code, you can write your own modules. Otherwise, you can create your own workflows by putting the work by combining a few of the modules together. In fact, if you go to public workflows and uh, edit any of the workflows or save them, they get saved as part of your workflows. Just a quick overview. Now let's go ahead and jump into public modules. Here you can see a whole bunch of modules and as you can imagine each module does something and this module does watershed segmentation which we need for today's, uh, for today's uh, task here. We also need thresholding and the blob tracking right there. Now in this case these are visible on the front page but if not go ahead and search for it like let's go ahead and type tracking and you see there are two modules that are related to tracking. Let's click on the first one that says blob tracking. And this is the one that helps us uh, track the segmented objects. And please remember the input needs to be a segmented object image. So the input also shall be in OEMTIF file format. So that means my input file, which is in CZI format right now, needs to be converted to OEMTIF file format. And don't worry about that. We have a OEMTIF converter that we're going to use to do the conversion. A couple of notes about this specific module. Uh, when it comes to parameters, each module you can adjust your parameters, just like you would for any software uh, image processing function. Here for the tracking algorithm you have a choice of two. One the Brownian motion, the other one is distance based and as the name suggests, especially if you know what Brownian motion is, this is the preferred 
method, if your cells or objects, they migrate in a very random walk fashion. And if they're actually migrating with a directed movement, then we recommend using the distance-based model. Another note right here, the outputs, again, you're going to get visualization, you're going to get a CSV file with all the required, you know, uh, or I should say with all the uh, relevant information and uh, a couple of HTML files, I mean, a couple of CSV files and a HTML file that contains plots. Uh, and uh, you, can, you can add the plots for each object and remove the plots and so on. We'll look at these once the workflow is finished. And for visualization, you have a few options. Go ahead and read the description. I mean, the description often helps you very much in terms of what to expect and how to be prepared. So if you go scroll down, you can see the different types of visualizations and you pick whichever one you would like to be reported. So this is our blob tracking module. And in addition to this, we also need a OME TIFF file converter. Remember that's the input file that this module expects. And you also need a way of thresholding the image because we are starting off with a raw image and not an object segmented image. And we also need a watershed-based object separation. So these are the modules we need. So you can create a workflow by giving it a name and uh, concatenating all of these modules together. In this specific case for tracking, we already published a workflow that you can use. So we can search for tracking right here, but this is the first workflow in the list right here. So if you're watching this a little later, whenever you're watching this, and if this workflow doesn't show up, go ahead and search for tracking and this will show up. So click on this workflow. As you can imagine, a workflow is a concatenation or a, a, an arrangement of modules such a way that you achieve a specific task. In this case, let's scroll all the way down. Again, I definitely recommend you to read the entire description that gives you a good idea in terms of what the workflow is, what modules it consists, and any tips or trick. For example, here there are a few pro trips in terms of uh, watershed and blob tracking modules. So if you scroll all the way down, this workflow contains uh, four modules. Blob tracking, of course, is the one that we are focused on, but all these other supporting modules that get our ra uh, data ready to be in a format that's acceptable by the blob tracking module. So what do we need? First, we need to convert our input image into OME TIFF file format. So we're going to use this. And the next one is thresholding, auto thresholding and watershed segmentation. And finally, the output of watershed will go into blob tracking. So let's go ahead and open this workflow to have a quick look. And that gets opened into what we call a workflow builder. This is where you can edit, you can build, you can add another module if you want. If you think anything else makes sense, uh, you, can, you can create your own workflow here. But for now, let's work with the existing workflow. As you can see, the input file gets defined here and the input file goes as input, you know, uh, to the next module, which is our OME TIFF converter. And the output of this goes as input to the next module and so on. As you can see, this input or CZI file first gets converted to OME TIFF and that OME TIFF goes as input to the auto thresholding. And then the thresholded image goes into our watershed segmentation module. And finally, the watershed segmented image goes as input to the blob tracking module. You can look at this in the workflow runner mode, which is click on any of these. For example, let's click on the first module right there. It opens up uh, the workflow runner. This is where you can step through each of these and look at the user interface. So here, there's already a file that got selected. We can remove this, we'll do that in a minute. And if you click on the second button here, this is our OME TIFF converter, no inputs for this one. The auto thresholding, we have to select an input and I would leave that to Otsu because that works very well on most uh, these type of uh, images. The next one is our watershed segmentation. Again, you can uh, define, depending on your object size, you can define the minimum marker distance. And finally, the blob tracking module has a lot of parameters. Read the description and select the parameters that absolutely make sense for your type of objects. And let's leave this to Brownian motion for now, everything default. If you would like to get back to the previous screen, go ahead and minimize the window. You're back in the workflow builder. Okay, this is a quick overview of a peer workflow runner and workflow builder in general, assuming most of you are new to, uh, to, to this interface. Okay, so now let's go ahead and run this workflow. So first of all, let's click on the first module 
and remove this input because this is the default input that the workflow developer provided to us. You can go ahead and run this and check how the output looks like if you don't have your own image. But we do have our own image in this case, so let's go ahead and remove that. And you can upload your file here. I have already done that as part of my, uh, it's available as part of my file. So let's go to select your appear files. This is the image, CZI image that I would like to use as input. Now, as soon as you hit save, this workflow gets saved as part of your My Workflows section, meaning this workflow is accessible for you to run again in future so you don't have to search for it under public workflows. But for now, let's actually let's go ahead and look, that, look at that. We can click this X so it exits from that screen. And now if I go to Workflows, it should po be populated here pretty soon, right there. So this is the workflow that literally the same workflow that got copied from public workflows to my workflows. So I can just go ahead and open this. Opening this will already have the input file I defined because I saved it after selecting my input file. So if I click on the first button right there, first module, you see how we have our own input file here. Okay, so let's click on the second one, OMETF converter, auto thresholding. I think we already looked at this. So our workflow is ready to be executed to be, uh, uh, so let's go ahead and you can click on the single batch run, which goes through all the modules at a time, one after the other, of course, or you can just select step-by-step -step run. So after the first module is done, it waits for you to hit next and then next and next. Why would you like to do that? Well, if you are setting auto thresholding, for example, uh, watershed segmentation, you would like to see the result first before you go to the next step, right? So that's when you can stop here and then continue. But if you're working on a similar samples over and over again, maybe this setting works. You just need to do single slash batch run, at which point it starts with first module and then the second and then the third and so on. Now, let me show you a couple of things while it's running. We don't have to stare at the screen. In fact, I can exit out of this window. And as you see, I still have one running workflow. You can always view and then click on this, which takes you back to this page where the workflow is running. Okay. So, the whole point of doing things in the cloud is it's very, it makes things very flexible. You're not tied to your workstation. In fact, you can go ahead and even close this uh, appear browser and go somewhere else. Let's go navigate out of this appear browser somewhere else. And now let's go back to appear. I mean, I should be logged in and you see the workflow is still running. Okay, so at this point, let's go ahead and pause this video and then I'll continue this as soon as the workflow execution is completed so we can have a quick look at the results. Okay, so the workflow has completed and it's pretty quick, probably about one minute to one and a half minute. We'll find that out in a second, but as you can see, the ticker up here for active workflows is gone. So where do you find the results? You find your results under results under your My Lab. So let's go ahead and click on results and it shows one. That means we only have one result to see. So let's click on this result and it shows you exactly the time of completion. And it also contains logs for each module and also for the entire workflow. So if you click on the workflow, you can look at the logs and you can see what's happening. Uh, one thing I usually look for is when did it start? When did it end, right? I mean, it started at 2111 and it ended at about 2112. So it's about like, like, like I guess one minute to about one and a half minute execution for this entire workflow. Now, what do we have in this workflow? We have uh, module number one, which is the input. Module number two converts the input into OME TIFF. And for each of these images, you have this eye icon. So when you click on it, it opens that in a new browser window where you can browse through your uh, images. And step number three performed uh, our odd suit thresholding and then watershed. And finally, that acted as an input to our blob tracking module. And these are the results for tracking. So let's have a quick look. So here it has the watershed visualization. So you can go ahead and click on this and visualize your image after watershed segmentation. And uh, here you have a HTML file. In fact, let's go ahead and view the HTML file. We should have actually, let's download that because this is not an active link. I mean, you could have downloaded this and viewed this in the same way, but we'll get to this HTML in a second. What else do we have? We have report per frame. This is a time series. So you have a report 
per frame and you have a report per object. Again, you can visualize this right here in the browser or you can just download these and open in, uh, in your local like Excel, for example. Uh, I do not have Excel on this system. So let's go ahead and click on this I button just to have a quick look of what result do we have. Well, it has the tracking ID coordinate of that specific object and the displacement pick in, uh, in terms of pixels and the displacement X, displacement Y, right? I mean, the total displacement and so on. You can go through this and this is the information that we are using to do this HTML plot. So we'll have a quick look at that in a minute. So this is report for frame. Now you can look at report per object for each object. This is more interesting, I would say, because we would like to look at uh, each object as a separate tracking object and how, what are the tracking duration, like how many frames is that object active? Sometimes the object shows up later on, sometimes the object disappears, right? And sometimes you have an object that's, that's there throughout the time series. So this is basically the duration telling you how long, for example, object number 12 seems to be there throughout the entire 146 frames. That's great, it must be very stable and didn't move. Let's have a quick look at object 12 in a minute. It also gives you the uh, speed as pixels per frames and uh, track length and all the other information that uh, is typically useful as part of tracking workflow. So now let's get back to our HTML file that we opened here. So this is the tracking for object number one. Let's say object number 12 is the other one that showed, that persisted for all the 120 some frames. So there you go. So object number 12 did not move at all, actually. Very little displacement. So you can add a few of these objects just to have a quick look at how the displacement happened as a function of uh, frames. Now. Object 12, let's go ahead and open this image, the only image output into a new browser window. And this opens up our web viewer with this specific output image. And let's have a quick look at uh, how the objects actually moved. And when you open it, it looks like there is nothing on the screen. So let's go down and see what's happening under channels. There seems to be many channels there, and this is 16-bit image. So the range is from zero to 65,535, right? Two to the power of 16. That's why we're not seeing anything because all of our data is right at the lower end right there. So let's go down and uh, change this to, let's say, all the way down. Now you'll start to see something. Let's squeeze this range all the way so you can see something's happening. This is our frame number zero. What happens as we go? This is our object number 12, if you see the object number 12. You can change the color, I believe. If this is not agreeable to you, you can change the color of these uh, of these labels. Okay, so now let's go to our channel uh, dimensions right there and then walk through the time series. So this is my time number two, time number three. Let's actually go somewhere in the middle right here. And it's showing you all the tracks. You see our object 12 seems to be not moving much. So let's keep going. Object 12 is still here. See object 21 went from all the way from here to there. And you can see all these tracks for these objects. Object 21 is still there. Object 12 is barely moving, as you can see. Yeah, object 12 is right there. 21 is actually moving quite a bit. And some of these objects are completely disappeared. So this plot is a summary of this information basically. So as you can see, the tracking module can be very, very uh, useful. The only prerequisite is get the objects segmented into separated objects. And for that, you can use the process that I showed you, or you can use your own process of segmenting the images, but the blob tracking module requires a segmented image. And then as you can see, it performs a great job in tracking these over uh, over your time series. So I hope you found this video to be useful. And again, as usual, I request you to explore, appear, and of course, uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel in case you're watching this on our appear YouTube channel. Thank you guys.